Hi there, welcome to Race Center. I'm Dazza. Here we have a uh, Kawasaki uh, ZX6. This is the 636 version. It's a 2017. Um, this bike's a uh, cable throttle bike, so a bit old school. Um, and, you know, recently in a lot of our videos, we've talked about the ride by wire bikes um, and the complexities with the ECU and stuff like that. So I thought it was a great opportunity to talk about what on the surface is a much simpler ECU, which uh, about tuning uh, with these simpler bikes, if you like. Uh, recently, we got a tuning inquiry um, that was asking a few questions, which was uh, you prompted me to do uh, talk about this one a little bit. Being a cable bike, you would think tuning it's quite simple, and in a way, the theory behind it uh, is, and it's uh, with the uh, advert of. You know, we've got a lot of auto tuners on the market these days where the, you know, you've got an AFR sensor in your exhaust pipe and it takes uh, AFR readings. Um, you'd think that tuning, you know, these auto tuners can just tune the bike. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about that. Uh, another part of this job, on this particular job, uh, we've installed a Translogic, Translogic Quick Shifter. Um, people who watched our videos before would have heard me bang on about them heaps because um, we highly recommend them. Uh, one of the great things about the Translogic, if you're not already aware, is that they phase the cylinder cut and when they come back in, so they're just much nicer on your gearbox. They actually feel really smooth and nice uh, when you're using them. Uh, we've had a few inquiries about what brands of quick shifters to go with. I'd use this one rule of thumb. If Translogic make a quick shifter, or a quick shifter system for your bike, a quick shifter or blipper system for your bike, I'd be going with Translogic every single time. If they don't, then we'd, you'd have to look into other brands. Um, if you've got questions, feel free to hit us up. Just contact us via our website. But uh, the Translogic are amazing. This particular one didn't need any adjustments straight out of the box. And to be honest, most of them don't. Like your Translogic, you can put it on and it will work really great. We always still do recommend um, getting them professionally installed and configured on a dyno. Sometimes we make fine adjustments and even get the lever position in a really good place so that you get really nice positive shifts. Um, but they're amazing. So the Translogic Quick Shifter was the first part. Uh, and then on to the tune. Uh, this particular bike we're tuning through the ECU and using the Woolwich Racing software. Woolwich have done a great job uh, in uh, the software that they've provided and all the tools and tables and options they give to the tuner. I've talked about it in other videos, but the Woolwich tuning software, if you like, is software that allows you to tune the bike rather than, you know, like if you, you could get a Woolwich tune done somewhere or by somebody else, they'll be different. It's just the tool to do the job. Um, and in this case, it's an amazing tool uh, that gives us a lot of options. So, um, back onto the tuning uh, of this. And uh, you would think, as I said, being a cable bike, it's simpler. We have a whole bunch of cells that are up here. Um, and what those, uh, uh, we've got columns there, which are all the RPM ranges of the bike. And then across the top, we've got the throttle positions. So we tune the bike at different throttle positions. Um, the way we do it here is we do static uh, load runs, so the bike is under load, but the static throttle position. Get that tune really, really nice. And then we do roll-on tests because the bike will behave differently when you roll it on. What I wanted to talk about when we talk about simping and the, the tuning and the, the theory behind it being, you know, somewhat simple, you know, you're just trying to get a target AFR, and then particularly when we go to auto tuners, um, is you have to remember one key thing. You're, with the AFR sensor, you're measuring exhaust gases. You're not actually measuring the combustion chamber air fuel ratio. In an ideal world, if you're talking about tuning and performance, um, you, would, you would, if you could, measure the air fuel ratio in the combustion chamber, because that's the important part. That's the bit that makes the power. The exhaust gases is a leftover, and the way that the harmonics work, gas flow works, and all that sort of stuff, you have four, four cylinders into two, into one, the way they all separate, join, can create some areas where the AFR sensor, like you know, they mostly do a great job, but they can create some pockets and stuff like that that you need to be aware of. Uh, the other thing too, is there is a phenomenon uh, called natural, super, natural supercharging, um, and that, might sound a bit strange, you know, like, so, you know, we know with a supercharged engine, you know, you get forced air induction. With natural supercharging, what we mean there is, say, on the intake, intake stroke, you've got the air box full of uh, air and fuel mixture, 
uh, the inlet valve starts to open, starts to draw the new mixture in, the air and the fuel, sucks it in, um, then it will compress it, uh, then it will fire it, give it your power stroke. Um, but on that intake stroke, in at different RPMs, what generally happens is that, especially at the higher RPM, the bike can't ingest all of that mixture. But the time, it, and you've got to remember that the higher RPMs, uh, you know, valves opening hundreds of times per second. It's so fast. So that mixture's got to get in there quickly. And just the way that harmonics work in the air box, airflow, um, air turbulence, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on in there. Um, you're going to get the, the inlet valve closing and blowing back some of the, the fresh air fuel mixture. And that's where your velocity stacks come in, or your intake trumpets, and different legs change how the bike operates and how that works. And this is where we took the natural form of supercharging comes in. So what happens is that um, at particular RPMs, and every engine's different, airbox design's different, and this is why race teams muck around with velocity stacks. Here in Australia, we can't change our velocity stacks, it's not allowed in the rules. But also why some bikes have variable stacks is at different RPM, that whole process is happening a lot quicker. When that blowback gets blown back, there are times where the timing is just perfect. And as that's about to escape from the inlet trumpet, so you get the inlet trumpet, just as that the, the, the one that hit the back of the valve and got pushed back out is about to escape, the harmonics and the, and the sucking of the engine, it's just about to suck a new charge in, so the inlet valve's opening, and the timing's perfect. And not only does it suck, the new charge in, it sucks the leftover from the previous one that it missed. Um, and that'll do that for a few cycles. And that's a natural form of supercharging and actually gets quite a big power gain. And that's why sometimes, depending on the bike, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll come out, even on a four, four stroke bike, you'll come out and you just feel it like it's almost got a little bit of a power band. It's just, you think, oh wow. And you can almost hear a harmonics change. That's what's going on. Um, so with that, that can sometimes do a little, some little funny things to air fuel mixture, or it might make it in some areas of play, uh, uh, um, seem a little bit leaner or richer. Um, so having, uh, it all comes down to having the right tools to do the job. Now, in this particular case, there were certain RPMs and throttle positions uh, on this job where we are getting the fuel, uh, generally in the mid-range in this bike it was lean, not lean where it's going to hurt the engine, but just too lean to make power. Um, adding fuel in the mid-range we've actually made a substantial improvement, especially at 40% throttle in that area. Um, so with uh, having a dyno is we're not just looking at the air fuel ratio like an auto tuner would. If you put an auto tune in your bike and do your track day, um, when if you're just relying purely on air fuel ratios and target air fuel ratio numbers, you, again, going back to exhaust gases, you, you've only got one part of the picture. With the dyno, when we're doing the tune and we're looking at the air fuel ratio and we're making some adjustments, we're also measuring the power. And we can see whether things are actually working or not. Um, so it's very important. And there were some areas in this tune where it was like, oh yeah, it's improving, go a little bit richer to where the numbers should be for an AFR, and the bike actually started to lose a bit of power. And it wasn't just you know, between runs you can get, uh, even though th this dyno tech, uh, uh, dyno's awesome um, in terms of how accurate it is, but between runs you can get maybe a horsepower different or so on based on temperature, temperature in the tyre, um, stuff like that. Uh, I'm not talking about those little things, but you can actually feel it and you can actually hear the bike and, and you know, on like a 20% run, you know when, you go, when you, you're tuning it well, is not, you're not just seeing horsepower gains, but you're actually seeing the engine run on further in the RPM range when you've tuned it. This one definitely did, added a bit more fuel, and it actually wanted to rev longer, so it would actually do the, uh, go further through the RPM range because it was healthier and happier. So using all those things and the power output, you can actually tune the bike a lot better. If you're simply on a, a, at a track and relying on an auto tuner and uh, the air fuel ratio, you're not getting the full picture. And, um, and you can have, then there's other things that I've talked about in previous videos about sensors that go rogue and stuff like that. Um, so if you're using, if you're deciding to tune your bike with an auto tune and not a dyno tune at all, you really need to be focusing on what you're doing. You should be doing things like using consistent tires, consistent setup, not changing any variables that way so that you can actually assess whether your tune is improving your lap time because that's what tune with horsepower is going to do, it's going to improve your lap time. 
and also your throttle response and smoothness. And you, there'll be people out there potentially watching this that would have tried auto tuners and go, mm, I'm not sure this is actually improving, improving it. The throttle feels worse, or there's some boggy areas and so on. If that's what you feel, then that's what you feel. And that's telling you that the tuner isn't working the way you think it, it should be. So you need to keep an eye out for that. Um, if people that are really interested and want to do their auto tune stuff, go, by all means, go ahead. But just be aware of what's going on. Um, in my opinion, the best there is no substitute from having a bike properly tuned on the dyno, um, and that's because you're generally getting a very experienced person doing it, and they've got a lot more tools in a controlled environment to get the right result. Sure, there's differences in uh, different uh, altitudes and sea level and all that sort of stuff, but the bikes generally do a very good job of adjusting themselves. And then if you did have a great tune um, from a dyno and then wanted to do some fine tuning with auto tune, sure but just be aware of what's going on. Um, with this particular one, we've done a full manual tune. Um, it's time consuming because there's a lot of cells, means there's a fair few runs, and it's not even just the runs, just manually tuning it rather than doing letting an auto tuner do its job. Um, takes a lot longer, but I much prefer it because there's a lot more control, and I'm using things like, like I said, the power output and using experience to say, well, yeah, the AFR is a little bit leaner there, but I'm, I know that's how it should be. There are things when you roll the bike on about what, what it's going to do to the AFR. And as I said, again, you're measuring exhaust gases, and depending where your AFR uh, sensor is in the exhaust, it's going to change it. Exhaust heat changes that AFR reading sometimes, so you've got to be aware of that. Um, so there's so much that goes into the tune, and that's why, you know, for me, that if you're doing a tune without power readings, um, and using a, di a really good dyno, you're kind of flying a little bit blind. You're not getting all the information. So um, this tune's come up a beauty. Um, we've, we've tapped into here, into the throttle position sensor uh, from the ECU. So, we're, um, so we know exactly what throttle position we have when we're doing the tune. Um, and yeah, and yeah, and that's a, a bit about it. Like, hope that doesn't sound a little like, you know, like a black art thing or not, because it's, it's not. It's just one of those things. The concept's quite simple but you do have to understand what you're doing. Um, the exhaust gas alone doesn't tell you the full story. So this one's come up a treat. So um, yeah, hope that makes sense. And if you've got any questions, just chuck them in the comments and we'll try and get back to you. We're generally a bit slow at getting back to comments sometimes just because we're busy working. So um, yeah, uh, hope you enjoy and let's go listen to this thing. Oh, another thing I wanted to add um, is that, again, on the air fuel ratio stuff, your job, ideally when you're tuning is to make as much power as you can with as least fuel as you can as well right so on a road bike um, we don't want to be chucking heaps of fuel out to try and make power so there are situations where you get to a point where you're adding fuel more and more fuel and it might make a tiny bit more horsepower but then you're adding a lot of fuel and you've got to decide whether that's actually worth it or not um, with a road bike we spend a lot more time uh, at low RPM and low throttle position than we would on a track bike because the bike actually gets used there quite a lot. Even if you use your bike for sports riding and riding through the hills, there are times you're going to have to be cruising, you're behind cars, all that sort of stuff. So the bike needs to be tuned well there. And it doesn't need to be making peak horsepower at those points and you don't want it burning too much fuel. So where your target air fuel ratios are, if you like, um, and what we're aiming for, we're actually aiming for it to be a little bit leaner. Not as lean as it comes out standard because that's too far. But you are, we are aiming for it to be a little bit leaner, so that's another thing. Um, sometimes with an auto tuner and stuff like that, it's not going to tell you, hey, I'm not making any more horsepower, but I'm adding more fuel. I'm not losing any, but I'm chucking more fuel at it. So does that actually make sense? And generally, as I said, you want to try and get a really good tune with as little fuel as possible, not just for a road bike, but also in a track bike um, or a race bike, because that's extra weight you have to carry if you're going to burn that fuel.